People of Israel were to worship God even in the wilderness while they were wandering for 40 years until they got into the promised land. Now the promised land where they would finally settle would be the place where they were to worship God permanently in the temple. Though the temple, the physical temple is gone, but in that place, the real temple, the ultimate temple, our Lord Jesus Christ, right, it's there, okay. And so, the promised land is the promised land because the ultimate everlasting temple will appear, that is our Lord Jesus Christ in the land. So, people were led by the Lord to get into the promised land where the Messiah would be born so that in him they can be eternal and forever worshippers. So, the key point of Exodus, the real sole purpose of Exodus of the people of God is to make them eternal forever worshippers. So, until getting into the promised land, they have to build an altar to worship the Lord as simple as possible, as instructed. So they have not yet got into right the promised land where they can worship the Lord in their settlement in the temple. So until they got into that promised land, they were instructed to build an altar, altar as simple as possible. Because you build an altar here, and then you have to move on to the next place. So then we have to build another temple, you know, altar. So you have to move on. So you don't have to. Right? You don't have to build the nice and elaborate you know, altars, right? Very fancy altars. Now, uh, so concerning, concerning the making of an altar, God, through Moses, gives an interesting instruction in today's passage. So I would like to reflect on God's instruction on the earth to see how the God desiring type of earth is referring to the ultimate earth that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my point about this sermon. How the God desiring type of earth is referring to the ultimate altar that is our Lord Jesus Christ. That's my joy of preaching when I touch on the Old Testament because it's like a minor. I feel like being a minor who is um, defining treasure and gem in a minefield. And so that's just the this is, you know, beauty of a sermon, isn't it? You know, it's my joy to find the image of Christ and the truth of Christ in the Old Testament. Yeah. How can you find the, the message of the truth of Lord Jesus Christ as the ultimate altar in today's passage? When God commanded his people, hey, people, my people, build an altar of earth, and if you want to build an altar of stone, don't use any tools to hew it. So use only stone on hewn, on chisel. Don't use any tools. Hey, then how can you find the image of Christ, the message of Christ Jesus in this command? So let me lead you into yeah, unlocking this wonderful message of Christ Jesus, which can be found in today's passage. An earth of earth. Let's think about what is an earth of earth and why God specifically told his people to make an earth of earth, not any kind of whatever. God did not instruct the Israel to build an earth of wood or an earth of iron or an earth of stone well dressed. As mentioned, they were on pilgrimage toward the promised land 
They need a simple and a humble culture, understandably, right? So that is um, the that, that can be that, that might be the reason why God just uh, um, instructed the people who got to build an uh, altar as simple as possible, like uh, an altar on earth. But as I said, God's instruction to make an altar of earth has a profound meaning which should be unlocked in Christ Jesus. Earth. Earth. In Hebrew, the word earth in Hebrew is Adama. Adama. Adama is a Hebrew word for earth. And uh, its, it's a root verb is Adam. Okay? Keep that in mind. So, the first man, Adam, was made from the dust of earth, Adama. Okay? Animals were made of soil of Adama. That is earth. Now, man is made from the dust of Adama. Animal was made from the soil of Adam, earth. Now, just saying that man is created from dust, which is a far in Hebrew, and animals are made from the soil, which is a rest in Hebrew. So, man is made from what? Dust, a far of earth. Animal is, animals are made from a rest, that is, soil of the earth. Now, by saying that um, men are made from the earth but with different substance, now, it is a point out that man and animal are sharing different things, different substance. Okay? But it bears more than the difference in material substance. God wanted to see the difference in spiritual substance between man and animal. Okay? The okay, reason being that we are made from different substance of earth than that um, that uh, of animals. Now, what is implied that we are spiritually different. As it's so, you know, it is already announced that we man were created what? Man was created in the image of God. We are spiritually different. Anyway, God wanted to build an altar of Dhamma, that's earth, where he would be pleased with the burnt offerings of animal sacrifice, which were made from the soil of Adam. Now, the burnt offering of animals is an essential part of worship. It is because without cleansing our sins and inequities, it is impossible for us to worship God. We have to risk constantly um, offer the burnt offering to the Lord to have a fellowship with God. That is all about the worship. But the animal sacrifice on the altar of Adama for man, the Adam's sin is not enough. Animal sacrifice on the altar of Adama is not enough to cleanse Adam's sin. There's the word place there, right? Adam, Adam, and first Adam's sin. On the altar of Adam. It is because, as I mentioned, the animals created from the different substance of Adam could not clean, could not replace first Adam's made of a fog, which is the soil of Adam. Animal sacrifice cannot replace man, which is created from different substance. 
done. So the gospel that we have now enjoy is that once for all, Jesus Christ, who is the perfect Adam, the Son of Man, died in place of us. We could have a spiritual conjecture that God's command on making an altar of earth is referring to the cross, where his son, Jesus, the perfect Adam, would be laid down. The cross is the altar of earth, where the perfect, perfect Adam, the Son of God and Son of Man, Jesus Christ, would be laid down. The cross is the altar of earth. So when God is ordering his people to make an altar of the earth, and this man he was referring to it as the cross. Cross is the ultimate altar of earth. Now, an altar on human stones. Let's cement on it. The Lord God also commanded that if you build an altar of stones, be sure that you don't use stones dress. Some reasons why God forbade the use of dress stones. Right there. One of which we could say is that not to have worshippers' mind distracted by the work of the builders. You see, nowadays that's what we, we see sadly. Now many cathedrals in Europe has uh, turned out to be what they did. Just a uh, uh, historical, historical monument is not the place of worship, isn't it? The beauty, magnificence, it's magnificence. It's just simply attracting all travelers. And uh, the beauty, the magnificence of the cathedral in Europe is a tourist attraction only. People will not think about God himself when they see this wonderfully beautiful building temples. For instance, uh, um, in Israel, after he's gone, right? Wow, who made it? How could it be made? It's amazing. The hand of man is so amazing. It is a wonderful artwork. Men are praised. So that might be one you know, reason why God didn't like how his temple or his altars elaborate or this beautifully dressed and uh, you know, sophisticated built. That's why he you know, ordered his people to make it as simple as it is. That is a bird. But there's an inside into the altar of unhewn stones. What is it? Now I would like to reflect on it in the light of what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. This is what Peter said. Let's read together. As you come to him, a living son rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves are like a living sons are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who is the living stone? Jesus Christ. And all the believers are living stones. This church is named the living stones. I got this name from this passage. It is my vision that anyone who comes to this ministry, touched by this ministry, becomes living stones who will be uh, built into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, as said, uh, 
by the Peter, the apostle Peter. Our Lord Jesus is the living stone. In other words, he is the undressed, unhewn stone. Unhewn stones. Uncut stone. He is not theologized or deified by his followers. He is not uh, the God hewn by the theology into Son of God or the Son of Man. He is untouched, unhewn, uncut by any tool of human intellect or psychology, or whether religion, or philosophy. He is, he was, and he is the one who was, and who, who is, and who will be forever. He is who he is. His name is Yahweh. Who said, I am who I am. I am not made by, you know, anyone else. I am uncaused cause. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to build an altar of a stone, living stones, which is not human by any human tools. Are we building the kind of altars today? But sadly not. Not every church is, is not building the kind of, you know, of the altars. But because they are compromise the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people say, you know, many liberal here and they say, oh, Jesus Christ is not God. He was simply deified by his followers. Jesus' resurrection is just uh, is, um, the fabrication. But if any, it is uh, simply bears some different meaning. Not that literally means that Jesus was physically resurrected. The resurrection of Jesus means simply it's a resurrection of the oppressed people in gaining their freedom of liberty, the poor gaining their um, the wealth, being shared in with uh, all the, um, the rich men, rich people. That is the gospel, that is the resurrection, true meaning of resurrection of Jesus. No, this is wrong. Jesus Christ indeed has resurrected physically, yes. truly, and historically from his death body. Becomes the, and become, became the first fruit of resurrection for us. That truth shouldn't, shouldn't be compromised by many churches, in many churches. This truth of Jesus Christ has been compromised by the preachers, the, the altar builders. They are using these tools, tool of liberal theology, by chewing out, you know, um, chisering out, to chisel out the, the truth of Jesus Christ. We shouldn't do that. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. The everlasting stony truth of, you know, of Jesus Christ should be intact. And you human approach to Chijrao or dress it shall be under his judgment. So it's my desire as a pastor of these new living stones, not dead stones. We living stones should be alive in knowing the truth of Jesus Christ. We are building a true altar of stones, living stones, which is not touched by these liberal theologies or humanistic ideologies. We have to get together to build uh, this community as an altar of a stones. Amen? This is made from unhuman stones. Now building an altar of unhuman stone also means 
that we have to respect and honor our brothers and sisters as Livingstones. In our relation to our Lord Jesus Christ, we must be heralded and we must be real soldiers who are keeping the truth, who are preventing the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ from being compromised. But in relation, in our relation to our brothers and sisters who are living stones, who are also called by the Lord to be a builder of an altar of unhewn stones, we have to respect one another, love one another. We have to honor our brothers and sisters as living stones. So what the Lord is commanding us today, as you and me as living stones, don't lay the cheaters or any hammers of judgment on your brothers and sisters as we build a community. Amen? Our Lord command, commandment is so simple. As you worship, you gotta make an earth where you are concerned to offer the burnt offering. But remember that it's done not for all. Because an altar of earth is the cross where our Lord Jesus Christ has laid himself on that altar, the cross, which is an altar of earth. An altar of earth where man was supposed to be laid down for their sins and iniquities. Man was originally from earth. Adam was supposed to be laid down on the earth of Adam. Earth, right? But our Jesus Christ, true Adam, in our place, was laid down. He laid, it, laid down himself for us once for all. So cross is the ever for us to be our eternal earth of earth, Adam. Dana, amen? So we have to be thankful for that. So we have to hang on to the power of the cross. And as we are commanded to build an uh, earth of unhewn stone, we are, we are, the, we must be encouraged to uh, hold on to the truth of Lord Jesus Christ. You must be the keeper of the truth of Lord Jesus Christ. You should not dare the tear touch on the truth of the gospel. Right? Or is there um, any um, in, in the approach, you should not approach the tear diluted. You must be the real keeper of the true gospel. Amen? And we also have to be brother keepers and sister keepers. And love one another. That's what this community is all about. So let's continue to be true worshipers in building an, an earth of earth as well as an earth of unhuman stones. God bless you. Let's pray. Yes.